Maybe except for exception of this one, Kawana, pretty decent uh, team that is a bit we've seen in these tournaments before, but Cortiva at one time was the first place team in season three. And looking at the setup we've got, we've got two very similar setups coming into this game. I'm trying to see where the ideal combine is. I'm guessing it's off to the top right. Mm, and you looks are like we've got a slightly better start from Koana here, who have got the ideal combine and the Coon Baylor. Ooh, which nicely is a done. Really good start for them. Very good. Oh, no. That is the Massey Baylor they've got because um, Cortiva have got the Coon Baylor. Oh, Damien jumping. I don't think that. Was that intentional? I, don't yeah, think, I guess it was. <laughs> I don't think they want that combine. They want to grab as many combines as they can. Yeah, they've got both yeah. ideals. They are going to use them. Oh, Cortiva is... Rablix is right in there. Hello, everyone, by the way, on Facebook and YouTube and Twitch today. Thanks for tuning in with us. Hope you're all having a good one. And if you missed yesterday, it was a heck of a fun day. And we've got another marathon of fsl action ahead of us today this is just the first game of many we're just getting started as you have a look at kawana gaming's bath headed in for the first bail bonus uh, we are at 1354 this should be quite a good one especially if he does the flick don't think so though coming in at that speed oh, and look it at this. looks like a very it's similar like a time <laughs> yeah oh 127 oh, wow. for both teams do you know what? That's the first equal first bail we've had this weekend. Yeah, All it's those the first equal bail I've seen in a while. I love that that's, camera actually, shot. A... Thank you, producer. Like you can see, like with the silhouette, that's... the ghost mode on, that they oh, were yeah. like almost an opposite mirror image of each other pulling up there. Uh, trying to see where they're going with this case. Okay, so they've got this case trapped on the case pillar and immediately going out to making bells. We didn't see that a lot yesterday either. Lots of teams just sort of filling up their grain cart at this point and not going out and making uh, bales once they came out of that first bale. Yeah. You are correct. I don't really, I think I really don't know what to expect from these little... teams, you know? Oh. Well, I think Kuwana Gaming have a little bit more time. They've got both of those ideal combines. They're going to take longer to fill up. Uh, as a result, they do have time from that to go and create a few bales. And yeah, they've already got themselves in a good position. They've got three more bales than Cortiva have. Uh, and, it's, and that is an advantage straight off the bat. This is some good gameplay from, uh, from Kuwana here. Yeah, not too bad so far. Poor Kalwana on the season, um, by the way. 60 circuit points, which was good for 14th seed coming in. And they've made the quarterfinals twice. So we've seen them on a Sunday event in the past two times, but they have never advanced beyond that stage. So a win for them here today would be probably the biggest moment of their season. Not to mention that if they were to knock off Cortiva, they'd be giving themselves a really good oh. chance at getting to the quarterfinals, <laughs> which would be massive. Yeah, they, they definitely have a, a an uphill battle here to, to get past uh, Cortiva. Yeah, Cortiva, meanwhile, two tournament wins, two tournament runner-up positions, and finished third one time. Interesting enough, Cortiva never made it to the quarterfinal stage and then got knocked out at that stage. When they've made it, they've advanced at least into the semifinals. So very interesting from them. And of course, we were saying we haven't seen them in a while because they were getting some unfortunate draws in the qualifiers. And so it's been a minute since we've seen Cortiva in action on an official English broadcast, at least. And Rablix dropping, dropping some early, uh, yeah, that that is an early drop of their um uh, of their grain, isn't it? Yeah, it is pretty early. Only ten and a half in here. 
And look at the amount of grain that Goana have. Wow, 42,000 litres at this point. Wow. I wonder if they're going to do a grain chain type delivery. Seems like they might be headed in that direction. There was there was no grain multiplier at uh, at twelve minutes. That that does mean that this would be a really good time for that to drop and, right. uh, and cause a whole load of problems for Kotiva. Oh man, we saw some teams get some airtime yesterday, didn't we? With some good moments oh, throughout, man. some pretty close games. One just absolutely bizarre game that needs to be written off. I think at this point. Oh. <laughs> With I, 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 we we, uh, we kind of went through that whole game going, what are they doing? What are they doing? Why? This is insane. Why have they only made six males? He yeah, Diaka came... versus Vultra. Oh, my goodness. Oh. And he came away from it and went, I feel sorry for him now because they obviously had connection issues and couldn't select what they wanted to do. <laughs> yeah, right. How about that defensive game? We had our final game of the day between Vultra and Lendner oh. where... Vulture did the uh, rush of the, uh, well, almost a rush if they hadn't reserved a harvester. So uh, Lindner were left with one combine and pretty much forced into bringing back their Lindner load up strategy. Vulture, I think, were like, I dare you to do this against us because we know we can handle it. And it was just, yeah. it was the, I've never seen a game of FSL played like that. I mean, it was we've, just we've never had crazy. A, a, a standoff like that in. in I mean, it was before. a standoff for like six minutes or so, wasn't it? Yeah. Like, it just was insane. Players acting like they were going to put bales in, trying to wait for the other team to I... do it so they could get the counterpoints. It was just wild. So here we go. We have Cortiva dropping off their second load of grain into. Uh, this and they have not taken so again this is a point I, I had yesterday they've not taken any advantage at all of this three times multiplier and if the grain multiplier comes up now for Kiwana gaming that is going to be bad for Kotiva because they do not have the grain to match under that multiplier and it is not lucky. though <laughs> they did not get the grain lucky. multiplier but I'm, yeah. I'm waiting for a team to lose because they don't take advantage of that three times multiplier and aren't doing the mid, you know, aren't, aren't taking advantage of that, that three times. I find that a little bit crazy. Yeah, that happens really a do. lot. We talk about it a lot too. And we're also wondering why teams still seem to be in love with Archimedes, even though it maybe doesn't yeah. make much difference in the end of the day. As teams think the only, do. The only time I, mean, I could possibly see Archimedes making a difference is if you're doing something like this that Koana Gaming are doing at the moment and you're unlo you're trying to unload fast because of the... Uh, because you only have a certain amount of time to get it out in the, the grain multiplier. Right. Otherwise, I mean, if you're, if you're just going to take two loads in the overloading wagon to the sell point then um it, it makes no difference you could say vulture caught them in a lint trap in that game oh god Belden, it's too early for that on the sunday morning <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness i'm almost sleep deprived enough to laugh at that though <laughs> it's energy drink time. Uh, right, uh, energy game one. Nico putting time. the first couple of bales in for Cortiva, and here's where that not happening earlier makes no sense uh, because it is 2.0 to 2.0. It is now bale for bale delivery, and somehow Cortiva have gotten the advantage. Cortiva back. have four more bales. Yeah, it started off with Kawana with the advantage, and now it's flipped the other way. And with 5.40 to go, Cortiva with a 60-point lead, staying in a pretty decent position. That means uh, Cortiva actually delivered two bales with the three times multiplier, yeah. uh, which is 
something else that we've been crying uh, no, out he for. Put it, he put it in with the he put it in with the two times multiplier just now. Well, that would be. He could have delivered oh, so he two put in four. Did he put in four? He, he instead put of the in. Gadget? He put in three bales on the two times multiplier. Yeah, that's the math. I can't math this uh, sleep deprived in this area in the morning. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that would be the correct yeah. multiplication of points <laughs> at twenty oh, apiece. Oh, jeez. Well done. Oh man. Uh, good. Glad to hear you have a good time, Pen Baker. We're glad you're here. We're glad everyone is here on Twitch and YouTube and multiple Facebooks. We're on the Farm Sim yes. League esports and on the Farming Oops. Simulator Facebook, on the Giant Software Twitch channel, and also on the FSL esports YouTube channel. It's lots live, of people live. coming in on Facebook this morning. And hello to the people over on YouTube as well. Born in Rumble Strip. All right, we're seconds away now from the super drop, and Cortiva are looking pretty good now. At the beginning, it seemed like Kawana started off with the advantage, but Cortiva definitely closed that gap and are kind of in a commanding spot here. Let's see what the super drop is going to be, though, because that could change things. Well, it's bail withering. Bail. For Cortiva, one bail would be deleted. For Kawana, I think it may have been two the other way around, so it might be more beneficial for Kawana to go for. That would close that gap. It would take it from 28 to 24 bales to uh, 26 to 24, so they would only have a two bail disadvantage, but it's so far away. I don't expect either team to go for it, really. And Damien doing some great work stacking here, actually. That's some really clean stacking we're seeing from him at the moment. Nico coming in and uh, similarly being very efficient. I'm just very happy bales on to be watching Cortiva again. It's been too long. Yeah. I've missed seeing Cortiva. Of course, Rablix they, they, was they part are. of the World Championship team for Trelleborg last season and uh, now plays for Cortiva as team captain. And it's neck and neck, 387 to 387 at the moment, but if it's going to go bail for bail and both teams get all of them delivered, it's going to go to a Cortiva. Might come down to a mistake, some bails dropping off the belt or something like that. I will say this first game has gone incredibly quick. I can't believe we're at the two and a half minute mark already. <laughs> yeah, where, it's where wild. Where did this game go? Um, and it's it's really interesting. They are they are absolutely matching each other, bail for bail right now. Yeah, five oh seven. It's five oh seven. To, it's just the, right, it's the problem for Kalwana is at some point, if this is how it keeps going, they're going to run out of bails to score. Cortiva just has to make sure they get them all in, and they're taking the first of the best of three here. Here comes another load of 14 in as well. Plenty of time to unload these and get them stacked with the skill of Nico and Richie coming in now with this load on the Anderson loader. I think the advantage we're seeing at the moment is due to uh, Cortiva having that uh, Kuhn Baylor. I think that's what's given them this bail advantage. It's not a massive bail advantage. Well, no, it is still a massive bail advantage. They've got two bail, extra bails out on the field, and they are a hundred points ahead. That's uh, yeah, that is not looking good for Koana at this point. Yeah, it's a hundred point lead for Cortiva now. Minute fifteen to go, and that lead just keeps climbing up. Oh, God, Cortiva going to go for the combo. Oh, he oh. managed it. We countered the it. Kawana yeah, Cortiva were close. To, uh, to block the combo and therefore got an extra 30 points. The only thing I will say um, is it like, was... great job countering, but he used four bales to do it with. He did. Where one would he have lost, sufficed. He lost so he lost points by putting points all four of doing those. That. Yeah, you only really need yeah. to put one in for the counter, but what had happened i'm sure was he had already picked them up to stack them and then was like oh no i need a counter and there's no time to really sure. set yeah. them down so you got to do what you got to do that might close the gap a little bit kawana though has nine bales outstanding 
and I don't think all nine are at the barn. So, nope. They even if they right. get all of these in, yeah, here comes a couple in Ooh. now. They might be putting no, those into the bottom. Nico does have bales there waiting. Oh, and those two and... fell off for oh, Kawana gone. as well. Yeah, so that I doesn't think help. this is all over Kawana at this point. There are not enough bales there to close that gap. And they can't even get them all in. Well, uh, okay. Hello, Neuron. No? Uh, my mind is blown. I love that this is a competition. Within our, at the end of our first game, we get that first comment of the day like that. I always love to see newcomers come along and, I, and be flabbergasted. That Possibly. I, I would say no, no disrespect to Kiwana Gaming, but I don't think this is the match to really test um, uh, how good Diva are at the moment. <laughs> right. So I mean that's a good point. Um, it's a fair point. I think I, I think if I think if Juana was to beat them, that would be a clear indication that that Cortiva was having trouble. Right. The expectation here for me very much is Cortiva will will go through and and Kuana will move into the the losers or sorry or the the runners up bracket. So. <laughs> yeah. Oh dear, Felden. If uh, Virtual Farmer says it about the New Holland with any more vigor, he won't just be saying, he'll be super saying. <laughs> oh, Sunday morning dad jokes. That's a very um, topical niche, niche joke that only some of our audience will get, I'd say. Uh, oh, man. Well done. I'll give Although you credit in all fairness, for that I get it, and I've never watched that show. Yeah, well, fair. But I'm I'm enough of a geek to to. Yeah. Just a thought has been bugging me. Why didn't Giants do a Clarkson map for the FS22? It would have brought a lot of new players to FS. Trouble is that would also require a lot of licensing for a TV show on Amazon Prime. Yeah, that will probably cost a lot of money. Yeah, I mean. You know, we didn't have oh, to go actually, pay a celebrity for Elm Creek, whereas <laughs> we would in that situation. I've been, I've been trying to think. I've been trying to, to go through my head and go, what would be a great thing to have as an um, here here on Twitch as a as a, a prime gaming loot item? Clarkson's farm, a Clarkson's farm map as a prime gaming loot item. What an awesome idea that would be. Yeah, not a just, bad Just throw that out there. <laughs> Amazon Prime, Amazon could uh, could um, uh, could use it to uh, to advertise the second season of Clarkson's farm. Anyway, moving back to some FSL. <laughs> One nineteen to me on that. Okay. Um, <laughs> I honestly, I I wanted to respond, but I'm, I still haven't had my full cup of coffee yet, so I was but it's so mesmerized the by of, the wheat on screen, just watching the teams go along. I, I I also freely admit, if it if it was me and Silver sitting here, or Miss Sealy P, or or anybody who doesn't work for Giants, there would be speculation there. Whereas, as, as you, you <laughs> went for Giants, there's, uh, there's a certain amount of mm, can't say anything about I do that. have to say, I watched, <laughs> I've watched the series, and I thought it was uh, pretty entertaining. I don't think it was as yeah. entertaining, personally, as the BBC Historic Farm series that I watched. That was really fun to watch, all of those I, different I, I, scenarios. I will say, I think Clarkson's Farm has done more for British farming than almost any show on our screens for a long while. Um, which is interesting. Right, uh, well, it's, it it's, approaches it's, it's it in a more lighthearted of way. It's raised British farming, yeah. which is interesting. Right, uh, so Nico is switching back to the uh, Ace Combine. Just try to see. So neither team is running two ideal combines this time. Which is interesting as both of them reserved one, which means they've left it on the podium? Sometimes if With it's like the reason. furthest one away, it, it teams can't seem to find it easily. And so they just kind of skip over it. 
Um, so maybe maybe that's what's going on there. I'm not quite sure. So it looks like um, I think we're only live on the Farming Simulator Facebook now as far as our Facebook streams go. So hopefully people have found their way over, but we're still live on YouTube and Twitch and at least one Facebook. I think that's pretty good. <laughs> We've got ten and My a half ideas to go. We in go this dab one. fairly well across all three chat. <laughs> right. Not surprised. No, me neither. Yeah, Neuron, you've never seen the BBC Historic Farm series. It's really cool. They go back to different periods of time in the UK and they kind of live out the life of a farmer for a year, I believe. Um, at t I think yeah. some of the different seasons are it's... like different links, but they do like Tudor Farm and um, they do Wartime. Wartime Farm was probably like my favorite of all of them, just because um, it was a, you know farming in a unique scenario. So there's a lot of war stuff m mixed in as well, and that's when you see um, women for the first time, you know, out in the fields helping out because the men were off at war and you know there's a labor shortage so it's just it's a really cool way of showing um how everyone worked together and i think it still stands as the record of most uh like crops produced in a single like period of time in the uk and it was as as, I, I, as I, important as like the war effort itself um to feed the oh yeah people. no it's because my so my grandfather on my so my maternal grandfather he was a, he was a farmer during the um uh during the second world war and right. uh, yeah farming was massively important to the point where there you know there was no draft for farmers farmers were were so important that they weren't they weren't called up war effort because the war effort for them was yeah I the Forget, uh, I think I think Churchill called it the front lines of freedom or something like that, um, because it was just a very important part of it. So, very interesting stuff um, in all of those series. Um, the Tudor Monastery Farm was a good one as well. And for some reason, I'm I'm just drawing a blank on the other period. They did Victorian Farm and Edwardian Farm. There, they, there we go. That was the other. We have we have a we have do. a bit of a. Um a thing for the victorians over here oh yeah it's there's, a, it's there, a great sort of set a of certain shows. reference <laughs> because it shows you like old ways of farming too and how mm. life was for uh the farmers and their families so they actually go and you know live in like an old historically appropriate building and on a farm and try to simulate that life as much as they can it's really cool I'm going to make a bad uh, early 2000s joke right now. Hey, FS Club. There is no party like an FS Club party. <laughs> What's up, FS Club? <laughs> Why are they driving on the crop so much? Combine will take longer to fill. This is all about speed. Some of the... Uh... Like this tractor you're seeing now with the narrow tires won't slow down when it's driving through the crop. So you can't really like waste time in the FSL if you can avoid it. So if you can cut straight through, there's more than enough wheat out there to harvest. You're never going to harvest it all. So teams will pick and choose where they're going to be harvesting it from. And then the rest um, doesn't really matter. I know some people come in and they're like, why aren't, why aren't they harvesting in straight lines? And they're missing a bit. It's all about speed and not so much precision in the Farming Simulator League. I should point out, Wanna Gaming right now need to get their butts to their silo because they've only got 65 seconds. Uh, because the grain multiplier dropped. But it looks to me like they didn't do the double harvester thing this time. So Yeah, bad timing. But that's here we have crazy. A, we have a situation though here where it was slightly in their favor by point one times on the multiplier. So they might end up getting a 2.1 to 2 advantage like we saw in one of our matches yesterday. Oh, there it is. Yes, yes they are. So they're going to get two extra points per bale compared to Cortiva. So this might make things interesting 
the rest of the way. The problem is, is they're still trailing and, and in the bail count. Cortiva not quick enough. Got those two first two bails in, but not quick enough to avoid them going in for only 19 points. So every single uh, bail that Cortiva are going to put in are going to be at a two point disadvantage. <laughs> Hello, Queen, and everyone else. Uh, you guys just came from FS Club stream, it looks like. Three. Welcome, everybody. Hope it went well. Hope you had a good one, FS Club. You Belton, you're not the only one that so. said that um, about the vintage packs. Uh, I'm not sure what that would look like in the future, but as you know, like we're always listening. And 22 is going to be a huge moment for us as a company. I think it's going to be really well received. I think we've put together a really awesome game. But as I said yesterday, self-publishing for the first time with 22 is really more of just like a stepping stone. 22 is just the first part of awesome things that we're going to be doing now going forward in the future as we continue to grow as a company and you guys have made us successful and are a huge part of that. So thanks for loving our game so much and spreading that love to your friends and family and people that create content all over as well, inspiring people to get into the game, teaching them how to play and the awesome mod community as well that just keeps things interesting and, and fresh beyond thousands and thousands of hours of gameplay. You guys are awesome. So thanks for that. And yeah, this is just the beginning, really. I'm excited that we're only... Uh, about eight days away, not long now at all, before Farming Simulator 22 is out to the public, and even less before you can see some of your favorite creators that have been blessed with early access, like Mr. Virtual Farmer here in chat with me. <laughs> <laughs> that well, I, I will say uh, thanks, thanks to you guys for for listening. I mean, FS22, uh, that there, there's there's. there's in the lead up to FS22's announcement, there was an awful lot of, of me going around places and saying, Giants is listening. You know, keep an eye out. It will become obvious. Giants watch and listen and, uh, and take in all this feedback. And one of the great things about FS22 is all over the game is evidence that you guys have been listening to what the community is being saying. And I and I think nowhere is that more obvious than the amount of vintage equipment we're getting in <laughs> FS22. Right. I've never seen the base game come with so many old tractors. You know, we've got four or five classic tractors in, in the base game. And previously it's been a couple. And then on top of that, we've got um, places like uh, Zetor and 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 the model kit I've got with the with the Porsche in it, where we've got classic tractors coming out as 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 included and and given away elsewhere as well. So yeah, it's really good to see so much classic equipment. I love that just available around and about because there's like a minute delay or so on the stream due to competitive reasons. You're saying this, and then Rocker TV official has a comment in chat that says the fact you guys are including vintage <laughs> tractors in the base game yeah. too is a major and much needed step forward so that can have been more on point uh from you alex yeah. but yeah well we're glad that you guys are happy you know we are listening there it's gonna be one of those situations where everything that's said is not possible it doesn't mean that we don't want to do it or we don't like the idea uh, but we also have to you know, think about what's possible when we approach game development. It doesn't mean that it won't be impossible forever you know, as we continue to grow. So keep giving that feedback, I, I, especially, in a, let me say, in a constructive way. You know, There's a right and wrong way to do it, but we love oh, the yeah. feedback. And we hear so many things because you guys are so passionate about the game um, and, and you guys care about seeing it become the best thing it can be, and that's how we feel about it too. So... Um, so yeah, even though the multiplier advantage going back to the FSL we're looking at now, even though the multiplier advantage is in Kawana's favor, Cortiva have a nice little lead because they just have more bales again with a minute 15 to go. It's about a, it's a 98 point lead there. It was briefly at least for Cortiva. Closing that gap a bit now. Now the bail count has evened a bit, but it's still in Cortiva's favor. So I don't it's, know if yeah, Kawana are going to be able yeah, to pull this off. it's 100 points. 
advantage to Cortiba with the Beal count. Even that's uh, that's yeah, not looking good for Koana with 15 sec uh, 50 sorry seconds left on the clock. Yeah, and... I just think that somehow um, Kawana have just been unable to press the same amount of bails. I don't think Kawana have played a bad set of games at all. In fact, no. they've been really smooth, and, not and a whole lot of mistakes. And they've been some great stacking, and, and yeah, it's still there's, there's this a little bit faster. point difference. Cortiva maybe just a little oh. bit faster on getting bails pressed and a little bit faster on getting them stacked, and that's, I think, going to make the difference here. Um, yeah. 784, it's a, it's 758. Cortiva are going to have to put some oh, in the bottom. Oh, that's There's close. Wait. Oh, and it's not. Oh, oh no, it's close. It's close. Eight, and Kawana ten. can get one mail in. They've oh. not got it. It's gone to Cortiva. Wow, that got closer oh, than I expected, but well done. That was. Uh, oh, I feel as you, say, as you say, the bail just was not. The bails were not there for Kawana at the end. And you can see the difference. One bail in the bottom. That would have closed it to just three points.